Hello and welcome to the AutoX Show. On the show today, we tell you what it really means to be free and rich with a pair of bikes that have price tags that would embarrass your typical luxury car. We also bring you a Harley Davidson that aims to be sporty and a trio of sensible hatchbacks, some of which have a sporty streak as well. But let's start with a pair of bikes that fit Jared very well. The very big and very black Harley Davidson Street Clyde Special takes on the big daddy of all touring motorcycles, the Indian Roadmaster. So highway touring, or cruising as I like to call it, is probably one of the most popular ways of enjoying motorcycles. Well, I'm sure anybody could probably do it, but if you really want to do it in style, having one of these motorbikes is the best way to do it. This is the Indian Roadmaster Classic, and it's a beautiful machine. 1800cc engine on a massive 400 kilogram body. It's actually a sofa on wheels. So everything you need, comfortable seat, lots of storage compartments, plenty of torque to get you going on the highway, all an awesome technology, gizmos and features that you could dream of having on a motorbike. Well, this bike comes at a cost of 40 lakh rupees. That's amazing. You could get a brand new seat class for that kind of money. But this bike really defines the art of motorcycling. The attention to detail, the engineering, the design, it's just a magnificent machine. And ever since Indian has come under Polaris ownership, they've done a tremendous job in making some fantastic motorbikes. In the touring segment, we haven't seen much competition towards this bike. Well, that's because the segment is not the most popular. The bikes are very expensive and doesn't cater to a lot of audiences. However, Harley Davidson has now launched one of their new touring bikes, and this is the Street Light Special. This was launched just a month ago, and it also comes with a very heavy price tag. This one is priced at around rupees 30 lakh. Uh, it depends on the customization, of course. The one right here is the stock version, and it's a beautiful machine as well. Obviously, it's not as big as the Indian Roadmaster Classic, but it's got its own set of awesome features, and it's also got an amazing 1800cc V-twin engine. Well, we've got both these bikes here. We've got a nice bit of stretch of road here, and we're going to see which of these two is going to be the king of the road. This is the American Civil War to see who the best touring bike is. When it comes to looks and design, all of these motorcycles more or less have the same layout. Big wheels, massive front fairings and fenders, wide leather seats, high handlebars and saddlebag. While the Indian is distinctly more retro, the Harley Davidson Streetlight Special is much more modern. Yes, it is also the newer of the two, but the Harley Davidson Streetlight also looks a lot more contemporary thanks to its dark color scheme and its blacked out look. Still though, the Streetlight is much smaller than the Indian. It is shorter and it's also much lighter. Which one looks better? In my opinion, I like the Street Light Special, but the Indian definitely gets a lot more stairs on the road. Even though the Indian Roadmaster is a little older, it still gets state-of-the-art technology and features. Aside from the usual ABS, cruise control and LED lights, the Roadmaster gets a wonderful ride command system. The speakers are wonderful and the volume is automatically adjusted according to engine noise and speed. The Street Light Special also gets special features such as ABS and cruise control, but it somehow misses out on LED lights. However, Harley-Davidson have updated their infotainment system on this bike. It now gets the new Boombox GTS infotainment system. The touchscreen is much sleeker in terms of design and it looks a lot more contemporary. Both these bikes have the same size engine. The Roadmaster gets the 1811cc V-Twin developed by Polaris and it's a masterpiece. The engine is incredibly smooth and refined and pumps out 151 Nm of torque at 3000 RPM. The throttle response is on point and you will be amazed at how quickly this big bike picks up speed. The Street Light Special also gets the new Milwaukee 8114 engine, which is also the product of brilliant engineering. The 1868 V-Twin pumps out even more power with 163 Nm at 3000 RPM. The engine is a lot more raspy in terms of performance. The throttle response is more aggressive and the bike accelerates much quicker. The exhaust note is also much more noticeable and overall the street light does feel a bit more sporty than the Roadmaster. The Indian Roadmaster offers a much more laid back riding experience. It's all about touring the countryside and taking everything in. You can cruise down the open road in the utmost comfort and feeling relaxed and calm all the time. The street light can offer you comfortable cruising as well. 
The bike is also very comfortable, but it also has the added benefit of being lighter, easier to handle, and a lot more fun on the throttle. This bike really puts a smile on your face and makes you feel like a proper speed demon. The suspension of both these machines is tuned for smooth surfaces, so don't expect much on crappy roads. However, the street light allows you to easily adjust the rear suspension. The overall ride quality is also more or less the same on both the bikes, but the newer and more powerful Milwaukee 8 engine feels just a tad bit more smooth. The clutch is also not heavy on either of the machines, and they both get a six-speed gearbox that works wonderfully and easily. So both these bikes are fantastic machines in their own right, but if it was up to me, I would go for the Harley Davidson. It's just a much better bike to ride. It looks better as well, according to me. I like the new look. The blacked out look looks very nice. It stands out for sure. It's a lot more subtle than the Indian, which stands out in terms of what's going on there. It's just so big and beastly. But this is more manageable to ride as well. It's got more torque, it's lighter. The handling is better. You have a better lean angle as well. So overall, I say to ride, this bike is much better in terms of overall riding dynamics, whether you're in the city or on the highway, it's much easier to ride. It's also much cheaper, of course, but if you want to customize it, you can do that, which is like what Harley Davidson is known for, customizing your bike to make it unique to yourself. I like it as it is. The stock version is just beautiful. I mean, just cruising down, listening to your music, and the sound of this engine is just fantastic. Of course, there are so many other models in the Harley Davidson Touring line that are even more expensive than this one. Uh, the Indian goes even higher than that, but uh, if you're just looking to have a great time, if you've got the money to spend on bikes like these, it really is all up to you and what you're looking for and what you desire. I can't come here and tell you that that bike's better than this. It's purely based on my opinion. 30 lakhs is not a joke for a bike that's very, very expensive, but you know, overall, it's worth the money. Seriously, if you have it, it's worth the money. These bikes are so much fun and they really make you feel like the king of the road and no one can get in your way. So in my opinion, I prefer the Harley Davidson, but the Indian, no doubt, is a fantastic machine. Go out and ride them yourselves and find out which one suits you. Now don't go anywhere because we've got another Harley Davidson coming up right after the break, albeit a slightly smaller one. Welcome back to the Auto X Show. Now Shivank rides Harley Davidson's latest Sportster, the 48 Special, to see if it's really as sporty and as special as you'd expect. Harley Davidson is a brand that you would usually associate with big burly cruisers and high end touring motorcycles. But you know what, they also happen to make some sporty motorcycles. In fact, they have a whole Sportster range dedicated to this segment. And it's not that they're new to it. In fact, the history of the Sportster range goes all the way back to 1957. It has evolved into various new models. Now this also means that the Sportster range is quite popular around the world. In fact, it's seen as the beginner's Harley. Now coming back to the present. What we have here today is the latest Sportster bike from Harley Davidson. It's called the 48 Special, it's just been launched in India and so as you can make out today we are going to ride it and we'll tell you whether it's as sporty as its maker claims it to be. Now Harley Davidson says that it's an all new motorcycle but uh, again there's a bit of a catch in there because this is not an all new bike. Uh, basically it's based on the 48 and that model was launched in 2010. It gets the same 1200cc V-twin engine. The suspension is also the same, the brakes are also the same and in fact uh, more or less everything is unchanged. But the main uh, functional change being uh, this handlebar. Now it's uh, a tall boy design as Harley likes to call it and it's been raised by around 7.25 inches. So that means it uh, gets relaxed cruiser sort of a look but overall uh, again it's a sportster so that means it's a sporty bike but with a cruiser stance and it's not as aggressive as the 48 the standard model. Apart from that yeah of course the tank is the same it's the same peanut uh, tank as uh, Harley likes to call it and it's quite tiny it's only 7.9 meters and the engine like I said it's the same V-twin unit but uh, now you get these chrome casings so again there's a lot of chrome 
but overall uh, technically the bike is unchanged from the 48. In terms of features and equipment, the 48 Special doesn't get anything special actually. It has the same analog dial and uh, there's a small LCD display which shows you the engine RPM, the trip meters and so on and so forth. Apart from that, there are no electronic aids, that means you don't get any traction control or any riding modes. As for the brakes, it has a single disc with twin pistons and ABS is standard. Like I said, the 48 Special isn't an all new motorcycle, but it does stand out because of its unique design and paint job. The tall by handlebar and upright riding position also makes it more practical and comfortable to ride. And this means that the Special can be taken on long rides as well. That said, with its tiny fuel tank, you get a range of only around 100 km, meaning on a long journey, you'd have to stop a lot to refuel. The engine is a classic V-twin and it springs to life with a signature thumb. It develops 97 Nm of torque and all of that flows in at 4,250 RPM. It's a slow revving engine though and after 3,000 RPM it transfers quite a lot of vibrations to the rider through the handlebar and foot pegs. That said, you don't really have to rev it that hard as there's a lot of torque low down in the rev range. And as a result, it never feels gutless. In fact, the acceleration is quite brisk especially when you consider that this motorcycle weighs 252 kilograms. The gearbox is a 5-speed unit but it's not the sleekest transmission around. Gear shifts are crude and clunky and the cable operated clutch is quite hard to operate. If you find yourself stuck in traffic, this can get a bit tiring. Plus, the heat from the air-cooled engine can really get unbearable if you're stuck in a jam. However, while all of this isn't really enjoyable, the same factors also make it feel very mechanical and old-school to ride and some of the riders may actually like that. In terms of handling, the 48 Special is actually a pretty interesting motorcycle to ride around in town. The suspension is set up on the firmer side and as a result it feels quite stable and short-footed around corners. It's not an outright corner cover for sure, but it definitely has a sporty and playful side. The cornering clearance however is limited and you end up grinding the foot pegs quite easily when leaned over. Now because of its sporty underpinnings, the ride is quite firm and on uneven roads, the impact from the bump is transferred directly to your spine. Overall though, I have to say that it's a very sporty and quite nice to ride. So now that we have ridden the motorcycle, it's time to get down to the facts. Let's start with the pricing first. It's been launched at Rs 10.98 lakh and that's uh, before options. So that means it's quite expensive. I mean, you don't get a lot of bike in return, considering that there are no uh, fancy equipments, there are no modern gadgets. And in fact, uh, it doesn't even have any rider rates, it just gets ABS. So, is it worth the money? Uh, well, I'd say if you compare it with other rivals, other motorcycles in the range, so there are uh, motorcycles that offer uh, more features and they're more sporty in terms of handling, in terms of engine performance. But the 48 Special, for me, it has that old school charm. It's uh, back to basic sort of riding. So, in case you're looking for a motorcycle, so you want something like that from a motorcycle, then this is a pretty good choice. I mean, it's not uh, heavy, it's not... Uh, cumbersome to ride, you can ride it daily. Again, you have to have that sort of mindset. If you're looking for a crude motorcycle that has that old school charm, the 48 Special really makes sense. Now don't go anywhere, because when we come back, Abhishek tries out a trio of hatchbacks that are both fun and sensible. Welcome back to the Auto X Show. Now we've said before that small cars don't have to be stayed. They can be both fun to drive and very well made. Let's see which is which between the updated Ford Figo, Maruti Suzuki Swift and Hyundai Grand i10. We have a fairly special breed of cars with us here today. The Ford Figo Diesel and the Maruti Suzuki Swift Diesel. Now both these cars are a whole lot of fun to drive. They're very reliable cars, they come feature packed and when you actually go out to buy one, they won't break the bank either. Now the Figo has recently received an update, so it was the perfect excuse for us to drive this car once again. So we got the Swift back in the picture as well. But this is the Indian market you have to remember, so you have to have a sensible option in this space. And that option is represented by the Hyundai Grand Item. Now this car may not be as fun to drive as the other two cars here, but it definitely is the most premium offering in the segment. So without further ado, let the games begin. Now for the purposes of this test, we've got Ford's top-end variant of the Figo, which is the blue. 
Now this car is priced at 7.74 lakhs X showroom. While the Swift we have here is the ZDI variant and not the ZDI plus variant, the top end one. We've done this simply in the interest of fairness as this car, the ZDI Swift, costs 7.58 lakhs, which is quite close to the Figo's price. And the i10 here is the top end variant as well in the Asta, which costs 7.65 lakhs. So all of them here are on a level playing field. Now the Ford Figo diesel with its 1.5 liter turbo diesel engine has always been the most powerful car in its segment. Now right from the get-go under linear acceleration, this car you don't have to change gear at all in traffic. The turbo of course comes on song just below 2000 RPM but even then there's such good throttle response that you know it's very easy to drive this car in traffic. But once you step on it that's when you realize that there is actually some turbo lag. You know, between 1500 RPM to about 1800 RPM where the turbo spools, that's when you'll realize that there is some lag. But in fact, if you're going to be driving in a spirited manner, for sure you'll be holding revolutions far above 2000 RPM. So on that account, once you start driving this car fast, it just takes off. So from 2000 RPM onwards, peak torque of 215 Newton meters kicks in and stays with you till 3000 RPM. So you have very good boost in that range and the car actually feels very very powerful so once the turbo comes on you can keep on pushing from 3000 rpm onwards but you can still keep pushing and with 99 horsepower being made after that so this engine in fact has a very wide power band and that is what really helps you use all of the power from this engine and that's what makes this a really fast car but now i want to talk about something else you know the pre-facelift model that came uh, with a sporty model it was called the figo s that had bigger rims and tires, and it had stiffer suspension and quicker steering. Now Ford says that with this model, all they have done is fit the bigger wheels, 195-55 R15 section tires on this car. But you know what? From here where I'm sitting, right now it feels like this car's suspension setup is stiffer than the standard Figo, and the steering definitely feels quicker to respond as well. So to me, it feels more like a Figo S has hidden underneath this blue avatar. So this quick steering, the stiff suspension setup, the powerful engine, all of this combines and comes together to make the Figo a really fast and fun car to drive. Because this car will just sniff those corners, dart into them, come out of them, and it remains so confident under high speed acceleration and high speed bends and high speed braking even because of the wide tires that all in all, when you look at the whole package, this by far is the most fun car to drive of the Trio we have here. Of course, the Swift has a more beautiful flair to the way it drives, you know, it flows into corners and all of that. But this, this is fast, whether be it in corners or in straights. So this is out and out a driver's car. And if you're in the market for one of these, the Figo is one of those very few cars on the market that managed to put a smile on your face every time you get behind the wheel. Moving over to the gearbox, well, Ford has fit this new five-speed gearbox in the Figo, but I have to say that this gearbox is not as good and not as smooth as the Swift's gearbox. For the clutch has a long travel to it and the throws are quite long and notchy as well in this. Even though it's a new gearbox, I didn't really expect this from this one, but you know, it is there. So this is nowhere close to the Swift gearbox. And in fact, I feel personally that this long clutch and the gear throws is gonna slow down the zero to 100 time of this car. So that is quite a realistic problem because the Swift performs very well on that front. Moving over to ride comfort, the Figo suspension setup may be stiffer, but it's still not uncomfortable in any way. The ride is very quiet and very pliant and it dismisses potholes and road undulations in a fairly comfortable manner. While the Ford Figo is quite the compelling driver's car, let's now look at the car that actually appeals the most to people, the immensely popular Swift. From behind the wheel, the Swift diesel feels very refined to drive. Over time, Maruti has really quietened down this 1.3 liter multi-jet diesel engine. So the quietness combined with the linear power delivery of this turbo diesel engine means that this car is very easy to drive in the city. The steering is well weighed and is fairly direct in nature. Now the clutch pedal has very little travel in it 
and the gear throws are very short so it's very easy for you to change gears in this car and drive this car very easily it feels very effortless it feels very intuitive and the steering wheel once you speed up it makes the car flow into a corner very smoothly and very easily in a very beautiful manner so this car is very nice to drive it's easy to drive as well as very nice to drive and once you start pushing it the engine will give you good power in the meat of the power band moving over to the suspension setup maruti has done a brilliant job you know it's new cars even the small cars the suspension setup is so good it's very pliant it's very quiet and very comfortable it doesn't throw you about inside the cabin so overall the ride comfort in this car is very very good my only complaint here comes in the form of the brickstone ecopia tires these are low rolling resistance tires designed to increase fuel efficiency but the fact remains that these tires are very noisy they have very low grip on loose and slippery surfaces especially when the tarmac is wet and there's a pool of water that's collected you can aquaplane as well so i suggest to swift buyers out there that you change the tires immediately after you buy this car so better tires more grippy ones definitely will improve not just the ride comfort and braking performance but also grip and handling of this car where you'll be able to fully exploit this car's dynamic capabilities and with that it's now time to move over to the Hyundai Grand Eater the Hyundai Grand Eater has the smallest diesel engine of the lot of cars here and that shows also this 1.2 liter unit is very noisy in its initial stages you know when you fire up the engine at that initial revs when you're going back and forth forward gear reverse gear so when you rev that engine it's very noisy and there's a lot of diesel engine clatter that pours into the cabin and that's because this is also a three cylinder engine so it's bound to be more noisy in nature moving on as you start driving along you can sense that Hyundai has put in a lot of effort to calibrate this turbo to the engine and the clutch pedal is actually very light as well so that's going to further aid comfort in long distance journeys or in traffic conditions so this car is very convenient to drive in urban environments and the light steering too factors in over here because that again makes this car very fatigue free to drive but once you start going faster once you start pushing that's when you'll realize the flaws of this power train because under hard acceleration or heavy acceleration at initial revs you know from 1000 rpm there's no response from 1500 rpm response starts to come in but it's only past 2000 rpm that the turbo spools properly and you get a good amount of power down on the road but then again you have to remember that this power band is very narrow So in terms of usability it's the 2000 to 3000 rpm range where you can really exploit all of the power from this engine because once you push past 3000 rpm and 3500 rpm the engine starts to get very noisy and power starts to taper off as well past 3500 moving over to the comfort cushion Hyundai again has done a decent job of making the suspension setup quite pliant so this is abrupt road undulations and potholes but in comparison to the other two cars here over potholes and abrupt undulations on tarmac the grand eiton suspension is the noisiest amongst all the cars here and indeed it is the bumpiest too it's a really tough call to take then between the swift and the fico both these cars are huge amounts of fun to drive both of them come with their own pros the fico with its more powerful engine really steals the show here but not just that This still is the only car in the segment to come with 6 airbags. As a result, this is also the safest car here. The Swift on the other hand, it brings you in ZDI Plus variant, LED headlights, a brilliant infotainment system and so on. But choosing between the Swift and the Figo, ultimately I would have to go with the Figo, not just because of its more powerful engine, but also because of its sharper steering and suspension setup, which makes the drive all that more engaging. As for the Hyundai Grand Eiton, Well this one is still the most premium offering in the segment inside out you can sense that build quality and that interior fit and finish inside the cabin everything is very high end and you have all the equipment that you need plus it is a really comfortable car to drive so if you need an urban runabout the Grand i10 diesel is the car for you but if you seek something with a little more spirit well these are your choices
Well, that's all the time we have for you today. Thank you for joining us. Remember to follow us on social media for your daily dose of all things automotive. And remember, it's chaos out there. So always buckle up and wear your helmets. We'll see you again next weekend on the AutoX Show.